Bitcoin donations first became a reality in 2013 with a nonprofit company called BitGive, which is the very first Bitcoin and blockchain charity and has been expanding its donations around the world. My guest today is BitGive founder Connie Gallipi herself, and we talk about why use Bitcoin for donations instead of just your local currency like the US dollar, how BitGive uses the blockchain technology for transparency in the usage of the Bitcoin donations where these Bitcoin donations go to, why would you use BitGive to donate instead of other charities, and some of the most notable charitable projects BitGive has been involved with in the past few years. My name is Kiana Danielle, I'm the founder of the Invest Diva movement, and you've tuned into Diva on the Block, where we take you to the back streets of this whole blockchain, Bitcoin, and crypto shenanigans to help you get a better understanding of what really is going on and how you can take advantage of it. Make sure to stick around till the end and find out how you can get, get involved with a mission much bigger than you and how to make a long lasting impact. And of course, silly faces. As you're watching, also go ahead and go down to the comment section and let me know which of BitGive projects you're most excited about and whether you'll be using the blockchain technology to help others. If you're new here, make sure to click on the subscribe button. This is my new YouTube channel, which is pretty exciting. And of course, like and share this video with anybody who you think can benefit from it. Now let's go say hi to Connie and let's rock the block. blog and this is such an interesting project because normally what we talk about blockchain because we're always talking about tech stuff we're always talking about money investing and this is taking it to the next level on how the impact of Bitcoin the actual impact of Bitcoin so can you tell us a little bit about the company that you found uh, BitGive back in 2013 and <laughs> then what is up what it is up right now and it was such an early time for you to like get into it. So can you tell us what inspired you to found BitGive? Sure. Yes. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, so let's see where to begin. Um, so yes, I, I started BitGive in 2013, which was very early in the space. And it was about the time when things just started to blossom, maybe even just budding instead of blossoming. <laughs> it was that mm -hmm. early. Um, but I saw the potential. And so I was at one of the earliest events. It was in San Jose in California. And there were all the ingredients for this to be huge. And of course, that was, you know, almost seven years ago. And now um, that it has become huge, I think there's still a lot, a lot more potential. Uh, but essentially what I saw was, you know, this could be really, a, you know, like the next dot com boom, a humongous um, you know, amount of potential. And I wanted to capture that for philanthropy, for giving back, for having impact, knowing, you know, after watching the dot com boom, what was possible um, and making sure that there was a focus from the beginning on giving back and having social impact as part of the whole um, industry. So and that's what this, I'm sorry to interrupt, by this you mean blockchain or Bitcoin only? Well, back then there was no blockchain or any other crypto, <laughs> right? It was just Bitcoin. Um, there wasn't even Ethereum. It was that long ago. So at the time, it was just about the potential for the technology, really. There wasn't, you know, there really wasn't even these other things to consider as far as like picking or choosing or anything like that. So, um, and so now we are, you know, we, we do focus to a degree on Bitcoin, but we do have um, on our donation platform, lots of other cryptocurrencies. Um, we follow the blockchain space because there's obviously a lot of other social impact use cases that are now looking at the blockchain and the technology itself for different things than just cryptocurrency. So it's a whole another ball game now after all these years, but yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about what exactly is BitGive? And is it so what, and why should people donate using BitGive and not just donate using US dollar? What's the difference? Well, so, so BitGive is a, a global foundation and we're focused on philanthropy and social impact with cryptocurrency and blockchain. 
and we've done a lot over the years, but mostly what we do is really focus our time and energy on working with nonprofits and teaching them about the benefits of the technology and how to use it. And we've built our own donation platform called GiveTrack that takes all of this and puts it in one place, brings everyone together, brings all the benefits to one platform. And essentially we onboard NGOs to fundraise in cryptocurrency on the platform. And the reason for um, our, our entire real mission essentially is to have impact, but through the technology, right? So the technology provides opportunity for efficiency, cost savings, better security, reduced fraud, all kinds of things that will improve in the, in the end game, the impact on the ground that NGOs are having, right? So the, the platform pulls all that into one place. It allows them to fundraise, but it also allows them to help use the blockchain for transferring funds globally, which is cost savings, time savings, and um, much more secure. And also is built on using the blockchain for the transparency of real time, seeing what happens with the funds. So as a donor, you can look at, you know, oh, I donated, even if it's $5, you know, I donated $5 to this project, but I can see it moving on the blockchain in real time. And then the NGOs have um, a reporting aspect as well to share like, yes, you can see it on the blockchain, that's great, but this is what we did with it, right? And here's the proof that we used it for these things and pictures, all that kind of stuff. So we're really pushing the envelope. It's a whole new thing. Um, but that's ultimately what we're, we're going for and what we've built with GiveTrack and we're slowly onboarding more and more NGOs to, to be able to use the tech. Right, and I think this is such a powerful thing because, so for example, personally, I was born and raised in Iran and one of the reasons why I'm into crypto and I share this story, a lot of people uh, on my channel probably already know this story is because, you know, first of all, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, there is no government that, is, that can just take it away which is what happened to my dad after the Iranian revolution. The government just took over all of his assets. So I grew up in poverty. And then another thing right now, so for example, again, back in Iran, right? It is very hard to donate, first of all, in the U.S. dollar because of the old sanctions. I cannot, there's like a lot of things going on. There is flood. Nobody even knows about it. The media doesn't even uh, talk about it. People are in so much poverty. It's just so heartbreaking. And I want to help them. But number one, I can't send them a US dollar. And number two, there are people who are like, hey, give me your money, I'm gonna send it to Iran. I can't trust them. Yeah. So I've been actively like, okay, how can I help these people? Like, it's just super duper hard to just yeah. know that this is gonna be in the right hands and the right people, and it's just not gonna go to waste. Because I feel like a lot of people who donate to charity, finding the one, the trustworthy one, is one of the biggest problems, the biggest headaches. Like. How do you yeah. trust this charity? So you're saying that this is because it's going to be all of it is going to be uh, <clears throat> recorded on the blockchain. It is essentially impossible for it to get off rail. But of course, the same thing that can happen to Bitcoin, Bitcoin hacks and everything can happen. How yeah. secure is your blockchain? Yeah, well, so it's not impossible, of course, because at some point it's going to become like most likely local currency and then you can't track it on the blockchain anymore. Right. So that's that's it. The last mile is probably the largest weakness. Um, the blockchain we use is the Bitcoin blockchain. So it's the most secure. Um, we also use RSK, which is a side chain that's on top of Bitcoin. And it essentially allows you to do more um, on the blockchain than Bitcoin allows because it doesn't hold a lot of data in each transaction. So, but it's, it's connected to the Bitcoin blockchain. So the same level of security and transparency. And that's actually why we really stick with Bitcoin is when you're coming at it from an, a transparency and accountability standpoint specifically, there's lots of other bit blockchains, private blockchains, you name it, whatever. Um, ultimately, that you cannot actually say that it's truly transparent if it's not truly decentralized and truly consensus based. Because if it's a private blockchain, obviously whoever owns it can change the data whenever they feel like it. Mm -hmm. you know? And even some of the other blockchains that aren't truly decentralized or consensus based that have sort of a smaller circle of founders who make decisions about things. I mean, it's not, how can you actually trust that, right? right. So 
we stick with Bitcoin for that reason. And um, it's funny because Facebook now is trying to do that, to try to solve the problem of sending money and is like, well, but you're going to be in charge of it. And honestly, I don't trust you. I don't want to give you my money. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I was, I was actually really pleased to watch those congressional hearings and realize that there's, there's a knowledge base that's growing and more sophisticated that can distinguish between uh, a company owned cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Um, so that was great. Um, and as far as it, when you're mentioning about Iran, it's, um, it's unfortunate because there's situations like that in a lot of places in the world. And what we try to do, which is hard to do with Iran and other places where there's sanctions, but what we try to do is work with NGOs. And so we vet them, we learn that they're on the ground and that we can trust them. Can you tell us what NGOs are? And not nonprofits. So it's, um, it's a, more of an international uh, acronym that's used for non-government organization. And, and I, I mean, just so that a lot of our uh, viewers, I, I know what nonprofits are, but it, the name sometimes implies they're not taking profit, but they actually do take profit. So how exactly does it work? What exactly is it called nonprofit? And um, how is it different than a for-profit? company or a charity yeah, so, so they don't necessarily take profit but they're allowed to to have profit right so they're allowed to have additional income or revenue in over their expenses right but the difference between that and a for-profit is that a nonprofit is required by law if they're registered and given especially in the US US a tax exemption to take those monies and put them back into the mission of the organization. They cannot go to the, the owners, there aren't any owners, but if there were, it cannot go to anyone specifically to benefit them personally, right? So when you start a business, if you're the founder or the CEO or whatever, you can take those profits and you can buy a house with them or a car or whatever. That is not happening with an NGO. And if it's a, especially if it's a regulated one, those, those funds have to go back into furthering the mission. So you could um, do more by giving back to, um, a lot of them do grants or like us, we do partnerships with NGOs, put more funding into those partnerships. You can expand your team. Um, you can grow, you know, your office or whatever it is, but you can't, no one, no individual can benefit personally from those funds. So what is the reason that most people join a nonprofit? Is it just out of the goodness of their heart or is there something that they still, I mean, you can't not get paid and continue working. So I feel like there should well, yeah, be some paid. sort of reward. <laughs> Yeah, it's paid, but it's not. Um, it's different. Like it's be, it would be like if you're a staff at a company versus the CEO who could benefit from profits, right? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you're still getting paid. You still get you know salary. And most people who work for nonprofits are really just mission oriented, purpose driven people, right? They want to be involved in something that's not about making money and selling something, but more about having an impact, helping others or animals or the environment or whatever it is. And there's a lot of people like that that are more driven by having an impact and a purpose than they are about making money, but they're still obviously getting a salary. So it's not like they're starving, but um, they're not driven by, you know, the, uh, the entrepreneurship mentality of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except for like founders like myself, it's, you definitely have to be still entrepreneurial spirit to start right. and run a nonprofit, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's not, you know, you're not. I'm not pocketing any of the funds myself. I do make a salary, but that's, you know. Right. Yeah. So, I uh, know, I mean, that's this amazing. And I'm asking because, of course, like I have a mission and I, my, my mission is a little bit different. My mission is to help people understand investing and grow their wealth and grow money. So I'm all about money. And I've made my peace with the fact that money is actually good, but also that you want to give back. And then you want to give it, again, to the trustworthy organization so it's, in the right hands, right? So, and I mean, I was asking about the nonprofit aspect of it because like, I honestly, I, I never looked too much into it as like nonprofit. I didn't understand what it means. So thank you for explaining that. And so now let's get back to um, how can people actually use BitGive? So for example, if I were to donate through BitGive, first of all, who 
like you mentioned NGOs, who exactly these NGOs, what kind of organization do they work with? What kind of people in which countries? And the second part of the uh, question is that how can I even use it? Can I like have a button on my website and where people can go donate or I can donate? How easy it is to use BitGive? Okay, those are great questions. Yeah, so we have um, on our platform, GiveTrack, we have a number of, of nonprofits that are actually all over the world and they're all doing different things. Um, we have projects in Venezuela right now that are actively fundraising. We also have um, projects in um, Chile, in Afghanistan, in Jamaica, all over. Um, and this is you know, a fairly new platform. So we have a fair amount of projects that are, are representative from a global standpoint. Um, only in the past like year have we been on this platform. You don't have Iran. <laughs> No, we don't. But like I was saying, there's the, the sanctions are a problem because yeah. we have to follow all the regulations in the U.S. And so we have a lot of challenges with that. Um, like we have Afghanistan, but the NGO is actually a U.S. NGO and their work is in Afghanistan. So it's easier for us to work with a, a U.S. based NGO that has projects in these areas versus an NGO that's in an area that's that's under sanctions, right? Right. So we found ways to kind of get around that. Same with Venezuela. It's a U.S.-based organization that has projects in Venezuela and, st and staff and teams on the ground in Venezuela. So it, we, we find ways to, you know, work in the places we want to work in that we yeah. don't, you know, get in trouble ourselves, of course. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then, you know, to answer your questions, we, we vet the, the, the organizations. We only work with, NG, with NGOs that are registered and um, in compliance within their um, country and also within the U.S. regulations as well. And then we work with them to develop projects that we think will be successful on our platform and with our audience. And then we work with them to, to fundraise for specific things. So, um, so people who want to support projects, um, they're all here on, on GiveTrack. And we take donations for these projects in Bitcoin, but also in fiat and lots of other cryptocurrencies uh, through Uphold. So we have a direct integration with Uphold that has about 50 different fiat and cryptocurrencies that allows for people to make donations in any of those currencies on the platform. So that's really exciting. We love that integration. Uphold's been amazing. And they uh, waived all of their fees as well. So there's only a blockchain network fee if you use um, Uphold on GiveTrack. Where can I, and oh, hold on, where can I find Uphold on your website, the integration? Um, it looks like... It's number two, yeah. Yeah. So that's just kind of explaining how it works. Oh yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this is the, it used to be a page where they listed all their currencies, but now they send you to another site. So we'll have to fix yeah. that, but. Right. Um, and but yeah, how, is, how is this, how is Give Track? So the Give Track is a part of BitGive. It's mm -hmm. basically the tracking system of BitTrack. Is that correct? Um, it's a product that we, a platform that we built, mm -hmm. and it allows for nonprofits all over the world to fundraise in cryptocurrency and follow the transact for donors to follow those transactions on the it's blockchain. Like GoFundMe style, right? Yeah. Very. Yeah. Cool. And where can we track where the donations are going? Okay, so if you open, maybe say, um, I'm trying to think of one that has spent their funds already. Look at. Um, Maybe the Desafio one, the sports in Chile, at the bottom there. Um, this one? And you can see, um, basically, there's a whole reporting structure as they spend the funds that they report out on. So you can see a couple of different things. One is the milestones, like you just clicked on. And it reports on each milestone and how it was funded and what the results are. There's also updates, which are more of an informal way of saying, you know, hey, we're here today and this is what's happening. Almost like a social media, like very informal. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a visual um, at the top that's called funds movement. And if you click on that, the orange bar, yeah. Then it takes a second for it to load, but there you go. 
um, you can actually see the flow of funds. And this is all what's happening on the blockchain. So you can see the donors and their donations going into the wallet that's owned by the charity. And then when it goes back out, and in this case, they exchanged it for Chilean pesos, and then it shows each thing that they purchased with those pesos. What were so, the things that they purchased? These are it? And that's under the milestones, yeah. So if you click on each, like say click on milestone, whatever number, and then it'll take you to the milestone reports. Oh, cool. And then you can see what happened in each. This particular project is um, unique in that they had a lot of small things they did with small amounts of money. Right. So it has lots of milestones that are like. Yeah, oh. a bunch over here, you can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that one's a little different, but, um, but it's, a, it's a good way of explaining kind of how, the, how you can see what's happening on the blockchain. And you can donate anonymously as well. Yes, yes, you do have to um, register on GiveTrack because we're in the U.S., we have to follow all the U.S. regulations. Right. Don't do a full know your customer thing where you have to provide a ton of information, but we do need to know a little bit. But what you can do is you can be anonymous to the public. So right. you log, this you sign up. Approximately account. one Bitcoin, it was exchanged. So do you have a system, and I'm asking it because like I'm all about investing, do you have a system to like optimize the rate of exchange, to like exchange it at a time that Bitcoin is more valuable so you get more uh, buck out of it? <laughs> or you yeah. go just strictly with the timelines that you need the money uh, by? It's, you know, it's, it's depends on each nonprofit and, and the project itself and what the needs are. Um, so it really depends. Most of the time, um, they, you know, obviously are trying to help people in need. And so it's all about getting to help those people in the time of need. Um, sometimes they have some flexibility. They, they may have funding coming in from different areas. And so sometimes they can make that decision of like, okay, we're going to, you know, we're not going to spend the Bitcoin right this second because the price is down a little bit. We have other money we can go do things with and we'll come back and we'll work with the Bitcoin later. It, but it's really up to them. And we don't, you know, as a nonprofit, we don't encourage like speculation or anything like that. Right. Um, no, that sounds awesome. So uh, I have two more questions for you. One is that what is going on with your foundation right now? Who are on board? Because I know you founded it, but do you have other team members who are helping you with it? And uh, I'm going to get to the next question after you answer this. <laughs> sure. Yeah, so, um, so yes, we, so separately from GiveTrack and everything that's going on there, BitGive is the entity itself and a foundation that's been around for seven years now almost. We're coming up on seven years. And so over the years, we've, we've built a team. We right now have a core team of six people plus a development team that's about probably another six to 10, depending on what's happening at, at any given time. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a board of directors, which has evolved again over the years. And currently we have seven board members and we just have added three new board members. So we're very excited about that. And um, our team is also growing. We just added two new people to the team. So we have a lot of, of growth and expansion, um, a lot of exciting things going on at BitGive. And you know, a, a lot of our focus today, you know, these days is on give track and working on the technical side to improve the platform and getting NGOs on board and fundraising for their projects. So that's largely what we focus on, but it is um, a separate platform from BitGive itself. BitGive is the entity that developed give track and we work our team works directly with all the NGOs. We do a lot of handholding, a lot of education, um, teaching them about the technology and how to use it, how to set up a wallet, everything. Um, so, um, so yeah, we have, I mean, as you're scrolling here, you can see over the years, we've had a number of volunteers, donors, partners, you name it. A lot of people have come in to support us over the years and we really would not be here without everybody's support um, it's, it's very hard to start and run a nonprofit but especially in Bitcoin in 2013 right if you can imagine so <laughs> oh, that's amazing so you were one of the first ones I'm assuming there must be some competition right now around can you tell us a little bit about the competition too sure yeah so we I mean I in the nonprofit space I, I don't know I don't really use the word competition competition I know because you're like oh yeah it's part of the mission 
<laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, we were around a lot earlier than anybody else, but there has been a few things that have popped up in the last year or so. Um, actually a couple years probably there have been a couple platforms that were built on ethereum and i'm not honestly sure where they are today if they're still active or how many projects they may have um and then in the past year or less there were also a few um platforms that popped up that were specifically just to fundraise and immediately convert into fiat so it's almost like having a uh, payment processor on your own website like you could have a uh, bitpay or coinbase or whoever on your website as an ngo and you can accept bitcoin and immediately have it converted into fiat there are now platforms that are doing that with lots of ngos as a sort of a front in a way um so i you know i don't necessarily like i said call any of it competition but i would say there are other um, projects and platforms out there that are working with NGOs and cryptocurrency. Right. So if I was like on my, uh, on my Investivo website, I wanted to encourage people to use gift track. Is there a way for me to just implement or embed a button and encourage people to, uh, start donating or do I do, I just have to link back and go to gift track. How exactly does that work? Yeah, right now it would be just, you know, you could create almost like your own button, but click, you know, it would click to give. Yeah. Yeah. We are working on something that um, it's going to take some time from a development standpoint because we have a, a small team and not a whole lot of resources. <laughs> um, but we are working on something where we can have like iframes and things where each project individually could yeah. have something on their own site. Right, like if you have a project that really interests me and I want to promote that one, I can like basically get that snippet and put it on my website and encourage people to donate to that one or maybe even share on Facebook or things like that. Do you, are you huge on social media or you're, you're still just getting there? No, we have a, a big presence on, on social media. We've been, cause we've been around for so long, um, mostly Twitter cause that's where a lot of crypto people are. Um, <laughs> but we also have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have LinkedIn. Um, and so, yeah, I, I mean, putting things, we also do have that already on gift track where you could simply share uh, projects with social media. So that's already set up. Um, but as far as like having some sort of plugin or something on your website, it's, it's not quite there yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And you know what, the moment, I, I mean, I would love to get involved actually and see if there is any way to get around this and help the people in Iran, because right now, like that is my biggest, I'm like, how can, because people are like dying in the flood, as I told, as I said, and the government is killing people and it's just so much poverty. And I'm like, oh, it just sucks. I cannot do anything sitting from here. Yeah. And, um, I would love to see how, uh, if, we, there is, if there is anything we can do, because I know that you can send Bitcoin to Iran easily, yeah. but it's just that I wouldn't, like, I, I wouldn't be able to really, the way that you go and um, bet if those people who are getting the money are going to be uh, good or not. Like, that is something that I've been struggling with. But um, the good thing about Bitcoin, again, is that, yeah, you can send Bitcoin from any country to another country, no, regardless uh, yeah. the sanctions, which is, which was actually, I feel, I think it was last year that somebody uh, started a uh, lightning torch and they sent money from America to Iran and then from Iran went to Israel, like all these forbidden countries, they got connected, which is pretty amazing. And yes. is one of the reasons why I'm such a Bitcoin uh, yes. fan. Yeah. So it's, I mean, from peer to peer, it's totally, you can do it, right? You could right. send in Bitcoin. The challenge we have is that when it's peer to peer, we don't have an NGO that we can vet and trust on the ground. Right. And also when you send Bitcoin to a place, you have to see if they can do anything with it, right? Can they use it? Can they convert it? If not, then you're basically converting it into fiat anyway. You're still able to help though. And so that's also where we are distinguished, I think. It's not for us, it's we are pioneering and pushing the envelope on demonstrating a, a real use case for the technology, but we're also a nonprofit and we want to have real impact and we really legally are required to have real impact on the ground now. We can't say in five years, maybe. So if it needs to be converted to have an impact, 
that's fine. We need to have an impact and we're still doing something with the technology, right? So it, in, um, in Iran, I don't know if there's an exchange there or if there's merchants. There or are. Actually, Bitcoin is yeah. very big in, in, in Iran and people are mining it. Everybody's, and people ask for my book. They're like, they call me on Instagram, like, can we get your book? I'm like, no, I can't send you my book. Like, it's just <laughs> like, they want to learn about it. But people are super, super enthusiastic about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain and um, so the, the technology is there. It's just that there are isolated and there is nothing that we can do to help the people. And there is nothing that we can do to separate the government from it's just, it's a mess. Yeah. Well, if there's an NGO that that's in the U S and works in Iran, that's the, that's the, generally that's how we've been able to make it work so far is right. that we have an NGO we can vet and we can follow all the rules in the U S because they're U S based. But then we can work with them to make sure that the funding gets to Iran and that the impact is, is there on the ground. Right. And typically it's like we have with Code to Inspire. They're, they're based in the U.S., but they're, all of their pro programs are in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So they arrange how to get the funds there, how to make sure all the programs are running, and how to get the feedback to confirm that everything's happening that, as it should. Um, and then you can get around it in that way. But typically you're still converting um, unless there's a, an ecosystem or an exchange there. Right. Okay. Got it. So actually, you know what? I'm going to look into it and I'll let you know. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. We, I mean, the beauty of Bitcoin is that we can reach these places, right? Yeah. The most remote places, the most difficult places, it has the potential for that. And we just have to be able to jump through all the hoops to make it happen. And these days... There's a lack of ecosystem, really, and so that's our biggest challenge at the last mile. But we're we're also pushing for that because it's ultimately, you know, if people are just going to speculate on these things but not build out use cases and build out an ecosystem, then they're speculating on something that's not going to come to fruition, right? right. So that's ultimately our message as well. So. No, that makes a lot of sense. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Connie. This is amazing. I really, really, really wish you a lot of strength and a lot of confidence and positivity so you can move this along and you can achieve everything that you have set up for your mission. And I'm sure the viewers at home are now super excited to just go and check out Give Track and check out uh, Big Give and see how they can uh, also donate and how they can be involved. And I'm hoping that this is going to get your message to them. Uh, viewers at home, if you have any questions, of course, go ahead and comment on the, uh, uh, in the comment section. And I'm sure either Connie I'm, or I, myself, I'm going to uh, respond to you. And uh, again, thank you so much for having us. I'll see you guys again in the next Diva on the Block. There's one tradition that I always do with all of our guests, uh, and it's asking for a silly face. <laughs> Go for it. Um, wow. <laughs> Anna's out of your... <laughs> I'm like too serious. I'm like, huh. I know. We're going to get you out of, your, <laughs> out of your comfort zone over here. Wow. How do I even do that? I don't know. Um, well, stick your tongue out. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that. I'm like, I'm just going to stick my tongue out. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> okay. Can I do like a peace sign too? Sure. It can be cute. <laughs> oh, that's super cute.